What's up folks, this is Ref, Brown University physics grad student. Today I'm going to walk you through the double slit experiment. The double slit experiment asks a simple question. What happens when you shoot light through two holes? So here's the experiment. We have two slits. So here are my two slits. And here is my incoming beam of light. Okay. So this is what's called monochromatic light. This is light of a single color. It's not a rainbow. And it's not white light, which is made out of all the light colors combined. This is just a single color light. This could be red, blue, green, whatever. So the light beam approaches the double slit, and then it goes to the double slit and hits this back wall. And once the light hits the back wall, it creates an interference pattern. And the interference pattern looks like this. Along the center of the detector, there is a maximum constructive interference, and then there is a dark fringe, and then another maxima, dark fringe, another maxima, so on and so forth. Same idea here, there's a dark fringe after the constructive, then a constructive, then a dark fringe, then a constructive, and so on and so forth. So that's the idea behind the double slit experiment. Essentially, you have this alternating series of bright and dark and bright and dark and bright and dark fringes. Now the question is we'd like to calculate some properties of the double slit experiment here today. So that's what I'm going to do today in, in the video. Let me erase this and let's uh, make a much cleaner diagram of the double slit experiment uh, for the problem that we're about to solve. So let's say here's my double slit. Okay, we're going to make it a bit smaller. Here's my back wall and this is my incoming beam of light. Now let's say my incoming beam of light has some wavelength. So the wavelength of the beam of light in this case is 600 nanometers. Let's say the distance between my two slits, there's a D over here. This distance is, let's see what my notes say, 0 0.02 millimeters. 0 0.02 millimeters and finally the distance from the double slit to the detector is two meters okay so now we'd like to figure out a couple of properties first of all okay let's let's draw out the double slit interference pattern here's my constructive central fringe destructive constructive so on and so forth and then I once again have the alternating series of fringes so what I'd like to do first is figure out where the first dark, so here's the, let me use a different color here. This is the first dark fringe, and this is the first bright fringe. I'd like to figure out where these fringes are, okay? What do I mean by where? Well, I'd like to figure out the angular position of these fringes. So for constructive interference, there's a simple equation that tells us where the constructive fringes are. So constructive, constructive fringes, these are given by, let me pick up the marker, these are given by d sine theta is equal to m lambda. So what does that mean? d is the distance between our two slits. In this case, this is 0 0.02 millimeters. Theta is the angle of a given fringe from the center. I'm going to draw another picture illustrating what theta is. So, in our case, let's draw everything out here. Let's say we're investigating a given constructive fringe. So, here is the central fringe. Here is the first constructive interference pattern. Here's the first one to the right. So, this one right here along the middle, this is the m equals 0 constructive interference fringe. Okay? This first constructive fringe to the left is the m equals 1 interference fringe. Likewise, this is also the m equals 1 constructive interference fringe. What about the second constructive interference fringe? Okay, let's erase this. Let's say I extend this up. So here, if I keep this pattern going, then this over here is the m equals 2 constructive interference fringe. Now, this destructive fringe can be found by setting m to 1 half. This 
destructive range can be found by setting m to three halves. Okay, and uh, and we'll see that momentarily. We're gonna see that in a in a moment. So for constructive fringes, we're going to use d sine theta as m lambda. So d is the distance between my two slits. In this case, that's 0 0.02 millimeters. Theta, for example, if I'm looking at this first constructive interference fringe here, theta is simply the angle between the center of the detector and this first interference fringe. So that's theta. Okay, what is m? Well, it depends on what we're looking at, which one of the fringes we're looking at. If we're looking at this first constructive interference fringe, then m is equal to 1. And what is lambda? Well, lambda is simply the wavelength of the incoming monochromatic light. So in this case, lambda is about 600 nanometers. Maybe that's blue light, whatever. You can fact check me on that. But what, lambda is just the wavelength of the incoming light. So m is just some kind of an integer uh, that can be, for example, 1, 2, 3, so on and so forth. So that's constructive interference. Let's underline that here. So to figure out where the first interference fringe is, m equals 1, well, I simply have to set m equal to 1. Let's plug in the numbers here. d is 0 0.02 millimeters, so 0 0.02 times 10 to the minus 3 meters. Sine theta, well, that's what we're trying to figure out. Theta is the angle of the first interference fringe. m, in this case, is 1. We're trying to find the first interference fringe, first constructive fringe's location. And lambda is 600 nanometers, which is 600 times 10 to the minus 9 meters. Okay, good. So now all we have to do is solve for sine theta. So it turns out that sine theta is 0 0.03. If I now take the inverse sine or arc sine of 0 0.03, I get 1.72 degrees. That means this angle here between the central line, between the center of the detector, and the m equals 1 interference pattern, constructive interference pattern, is 1.72 degrees. Kelvin, just kidding. That's a joke. Now that's constructive interference. Now we can play the same game for destructive interference. Let me, let, let's do destructive interference up top here. To calculate the location of the destructive fringes, we need to make only one adjustment in our equation. In our equation, we have to now replace m this integer by m plus half. So d sine theta is now going to equal m plus one half times lambda. So d in this case is once again 0 0.02 millimeters. So 0 0.02 times 10 to the minus three meters. We again have sine theta, but now let's set m equal to zero so that we have one half of 600 nanometers, 600 times 10 to the minus nine meters. Okay, great. So now if I just solve for sine theta, what am I going to get? I'll get 300 times 10 to the minus 9 meters divided by 0 0.02 times 10 to the minus 3 meters. Now this is just going to be what? So 300 divided by 2 is 150. Or actually, let's make it even simpler. Let's make our lives easier. This is 3 times 10 to the minus 7. Okay, because this is 100 here. So this is 3 times 10 to the minus 7, and this here is 0 0.02 times 10 to the minus 3 meters. So 3 divided by 2 is 1.5. So this is 1.5, but times 100. So that's going to be 15, 150 times 10 to the minus 7 plus 3, so minus 4. So this is what sine of theta is equal to. Now I'm going to do real time the arc sine. So let's do it on the calculator here. Arc sine of 150 times 10 to the minus 4. So arc sine of 150 times 10 to the minus 4. I would show this on the screen if my calculator was an actual calculator, but it's actually a computer. So this turns out to be 0.85. So that means theta is equal to 0 0.85 degrees. Okay? And so that means the angular position of this first destructive fringe is 0 0.85 degrees. And you could say, wait, couldn't I have just done 1.72 divided by 2 and gotten the same thing? You actually could have. So you don't actually have to you know, go through this calculation process. You could just take the location of the 
first constructive interference fringe and just divide it by two to get the location of the first destructive interference fringe. Okay, very good, very good, very good. So now let's find how far the destructive fringe is from the central maximum and how far the constructive fringe is from the central maximum. So that's pretty fairly easy to do. We know that this length here between the slits and the wall is two meters. So we can just use SOHCAHTOA. In particular, we can use tangent. So tan of theta is opposite. So in this case, let's look at m equals one first. Here the opposite is going to be what? It's gonna be this distance that we're trying to find divided by adjacent, which is two meters. Now in this case, we already know theta is 1.72 degrees. So that means this length here, so the distance of the m equals one constructive fringe is just two times tangent of 1.72. Okay, so let's see what that is. Two times tangent, let's calculate that. Two times tangent of 1.72 is 0 0.06. And so that's 0 0.06 meters or six centimeters, right? So that's the distance from the central maximum to the first constructive interference fringe. Likewise, we could play the same game with the first destructive interference fringe. So I'm going to write that down here. Hopefully you can see the distance from the central maximum to the first destructive interference fringe is simply two times the tangent of 0.86. So there's no guarantee that's going to be just half of what I originally have, but okay, it is. It's simply three centimeters or 0.03 meters. Okay, so let's draw a picture summarizing all the things we calculated so far. What we found so far is as follows. Here is our double slit arrangement. Here is our back wall. Our back wall is two meters away from our double slit. Our two slits are separated by 0.02 meters or 0.02 millimeters. We have incoming light with a wavelength of 600 nanometers coming in. And finally, what we found right now is the following. Here is our central bright fringe. This is right along the center. And then we have our second, we have our third, so on and so forth. We have our second, we have our third, okay? What we found is that this first destructive interference pattern, okay, the location of this first destructive interference is 0.86 degrees away from the central maximum. And it's three centimeters away from, from this point. Okay, so this distance here is three centimeters. The angular distance is 0.86 degrees. So this is for the M equals one half first destructive interference fringe. Now, what about the first constructive interference? That happens over here. So this angle over here is double 0.86, 1.72 degrees. And it occurs at double the distance. It occurs at six centimeters. This is the M equals one constructive interference pattern. Okay, and then you can rinse and repeat for the other interference and destructive, constructive and destructive peaks. The last thing I'd like to note is how many constructive and destructive peaks are there? How many fringes do we expect to see? Well, to answer that question, we can do the following. If you imagine there's an eyeball here, the furthest away this eyeball can look is like this. And if I take that really far, the furthest apart, the furthest away that this eyeball can look uh, from the center is 90 degrees, 90 degrees with respect to this x-axis, to this horizontal central line. So that means if I take my constructive interference formula, d sine theta is equal to m lambda, and I set theta equal to 90 degrees, then sine of 90 is simply one. And so then I get that the number of fringes, m, is simply d over lambda. In this case, d, the distance between the two slits is 0 0.02, millimeters, so 0 0.02 times 10 to the minus three, divided by lambda, which in this case is 600 nanometers, 600 times 10 to the minus nine meters. If I divide these two, then I get some kind of a estimate for how many fringes I should have. So I'm doing that right now. 
600 times 10 to the minus 9. And we get about 33 fringes. So M is about 33.33, but rounding down, that's 33 fringes. But what that means is that you'll have 33 constructive peaks on your right, 33 constructive peaks on your left. So you'll actually have more than 33 peaks. So let me illustrate what I mean. Here is, once again, our double slit. Here is our back wall. And so what we just discovered, okay, this is my m equals zero constructive peak. And then we've got a bunch more and a bunch more the other way. So what we just discovered is that there are 33 of these constructive peaks to the upper of the central peak. So this is, there are 33 constructive peaks here, 33 constructive peaks here. And then there's this central peak that we haven't counted yet. So that means there's a total of 33 plus 33 plus one constructive peaks, which gives you 67 constructive peaks. How many destructive peaks are there? Well, that's actually very simple to count. It's just, so this is the number of constructive uh, peaks. The number of destructive peaks is simply 67 minus one, which is 66. Why is it one less? Because let's say we're just looking at this box here, okay? We see that there's the central bright fringe. So there's one bright fringe, two bright fringe, three bright fringes. How many dark fringes are there? Well, you just count the middle ones. There's one, there's two. So the number of things in between will always be one less than the number of constructive fringes on the edges. It's the same reason why if you cut a chocolate bar two times, then there are three pieces. There are three actual pieces, but there's only two actual cuts. There are three constructive peaks, but only two actual destructive peaks. Anyway, that's a brief summary of the double slit experiment. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next